What's up everybody? Today we're walking through a deep dive of Eureka Animos, the first of four field operations zones for Final Fantasy XIV Stormblood. There are timestamps in the description below to reference specific topics, but if it's your first time going to Eureka, I'd recommend watching the full guide. Thanks for checking this out. Let's get started. At this point, hopefully you've watched the previous guide in the Eureka series, so you've unlocked your challenge log, spent your poetics, acquired your weapon, acquired an elemental body, purchased some harmony potions, and some food. Head to Rodney at Pier 1 in Kugane to enter Animos and to get started on your Eureka journey. The first thing you want to do when you go in is to touch the Aetherite to attune to it, talk to Kryle, start some quests, introduce yourself to the other NPCs in the zone, including Geralt, who clearly doesn't want to be there, and then head over to the NPC that sells Eureka potions. These potions will give you a region that allows you to take on enemies that are maybe a little bit harder than you would otherwise be able to handle. One thing to note about the quests that you picked up, these quests are not like most of the quests in Final Fantasy XIV. The style is more like the style from Final Fantasy XI. The quest giver will give you an objective, tell you generally what to do, but they won't be marked on your map. So I'll be letting you know where you're going to be headed to accomplish the objectives for these quests in the guide. The next thing to talk about is the Animos Elementals. If you're wearing an elemental body, I would not spend the time going out of the way to actively seek these out. The experience buff that they provide is usually negated by the amount of time spent going out of the way to get it. For free trial players, you may want to sacrifice that time to find one though, because it will give you a minor attack and regen bonus that make the experience safer for players with no access to an elemental body gear. Finally, pop a potion of harmony and eat some food in order to give yourself a 10% experience points bonus and a little bit more HP. Now after all of that, it's time to start murdering. The background footage throughout the video shows the path I take and the things I kill as I grind levels through this zone. I can guarantee one of you is going to go in the comments and start talking about grinding fates, but you're wrong. That's the slowest possible way to go through this zone. The fastest way is to kill things two or three levels higher than you, or if you're a trial player and nobody one level higher than you, until you reach about level 17. Another preference I have is to avoid attacking monsters that are going to pop fates. I want to avoid popping fates because I don't want to drag people on top of my farm spot, which is going to keep me from being able to progress through the zone as quickly as I'd like. As you progress through the zone murderizing everything you see, make sure you're keeping track of your challenge log completion as well. If you vary the type of enemies you kill correctly, you should be able to reach level 17 within about 9 EXP change, which is a lot faster than people think. Just so people don't think I hate fairies in general, I want to point out that as I was going through the zone murderizing things, I happened to see a fairy right next to the spot where I was grinding. This is a perfect example of a time to grab a fairy where it's beneficial to everyone, so don't just ignore them. They are valuable if you can get them at the right spots. Here's a great example of why fates are best to ignore until you're approaching the end of the zone and are farming crystals. Killing this low level fate took about 6 minutes solo and grants only 3,312 experience. Even with an abysmally slow rate of killing when grinding enemies to level as I suggest, you should be able to get 2-3 to three times that amount of experience in that amount of time, since each kill should net you about 25% of what the fate does. The fates also give a negligible amount of crystals at low levels and give none at all when they're two or more levels above you, so it's best to not stress about fates until around level 16 or 17. Anyways, once you finish your first experience chain, you should be around level 5. At 5, you can complete your first two Magicite quests, which massively boost your attack capabilities, so do them as soon as possible here. All the quests start with Kryle, and the first objective is located here, at the Early Natural History Society Observatory. Things here are sight or blood aggro, so just walk behind them to avoid detection. Grab the Magicite, and then head back to the camp to finish the quest. Carl lets you keep the Magicite, and you want to visit the Magia Melder to add it to your hoard. Most of you will get the best results just stacking them all in the same element, and then rotating them to offensive in each grind spot. If you ever run out of spins, opening the Magia Melder immediately restores you back to 5 charges. The level 5 quest objective is located here, 
near the center of the map. When you complete this, I also recommend getting the wind-torn cabin etherite to speed up travel if you can. Then, head back to town, pop it in your board, chat with Kryle, and now you're ready to go do more killing with a 72% elemental attack bonus. All right. Head back out and continue exterminating the local flora and fauna at will. If you haven't already been experimenting with burning down packs of enemies with AoEs, this is probably where you're going to start trying to do so. At this point, this is where I see a lot of people experience their first death in Eureka. You think to yourself with all of this new magicite fueled elemental strength, how far can I push it? Definitely not this far. After you inevitably find the limits of your newfound power, You'll eventually hit a groove and mow down the next few levels with relative ease. Challenge logs should start completing at this time and can trivialize the effort required at some points to progress grinding through the zone. Once you hit level 13, another quest becomes available. This one takes you up to the central northern part of the map, where you find more elemental crack rocks to fuel what I'm sure has quickly become an addiction. While you're up there, attune to the abandoned laboratory aetherite in the northwest corner, then port back to camp enhance your magia board, wrap up the quest dialogue with Kryle, and then get back to killing, because this stuff isn't gonna kill itself. Up to this point, I typically grind a path between the camp and the wind-torn cabin on the east edge of the map, but for the remaining levels, I head to the center and north center of the map for the level appropriate targets you're looking for. To complete the zone quest, you'll need 99 Animus Crystals from Fates, so I typically work on Core Claws, Henbane, and Duskfall Dullahan from 14 to 17 because they pop Circuit, Judgmental Julika, and the White Rider Fates. If you can get these three Fates to pop and get a gold rating on them, then completing any other Fate in the zone will put you at 99 or more Crystals, letting you finish the Animus quest line. You'll notice that as I'm farming these Dullahan, another player comes over and starts attacking them. They think that they're helping, but it slashes the experience gained when things get touched by other people. This is why I recommend at lower levels to avoid using fate spawn enemies for grind spots, because you'll get your experience cut when other people try to join in. Once you've reached 17 and completed your first few fates, to gather those required 99 Animos Crystals, you can do the quest to acquire your final free Magicite and finish the Animos questline unlocking the salt mines of Pagos. The last Magicite is located in the northeast corner, here, and is surrounded by a lot of high-level enemies, so be very careful as you approach. Slot the last Magia into your wheel, and now you can be twice as powerful as you used to be anytime you spend to offensive. The final quest of Animos is located here. Make sure you bring your 99 Animos crystals, go do some cutscenes, come back to town, and then you're ready to get out of here and head to Pagos. Head back to Kagane and jump into Pagos for a couple of levels. It should only take you a few dozen kills in order to level up from 17 to 19 or 20, so make sure you do that quickly so that you're able to come back into Animos and do the necessary fates, including Pazuzu, to finish your weapon in the Animos zone. Now that you're ready to dive fully into fates, here's a great tool that a lot of the community uses in order to accomplish those goals. The Eureka Tracker tells you exactly what to kill in order to spawn each fate, as well as gives you an ability to track when it was killed so that you know when it will come back up. It also tells you what's going on with the weather so you know any weather dependent spawns will be available at a certain time, or when it's going to be nighttime so that you know when those will be available too. Once you're at least level 19 or 20, you can return to Animos to finish your weapon. You should be fully focused on fates at this point, but fates drop Animos crystals, and the weapons require Protean crystals. Geralt will help convert the Animos crystals to Protean at approximately 3.5 times rate, so you'll need about 375 Animos crystals to complete this stage of one relic weapon. At this point, the last thing you need is Pazuzu's feathers from the final fate in the zone. You might want some friends to help you out with this one. The shadow wraiths you need to kill in order to spawn this only pop at night, but Pazuzu itself only pops during Gale's weather. These two things don't have to happen at the same time. So long as a sufficient amount of wraiths have been killed during the night time, the next time the Gale's weather comes by, Pazuzu can pop. Obtaining a gold rating on this fate gives you the three feathers needed to complete the last upgrade step for your weapon. Congratulations! There is an alternative way to get feathers if Pazuzu just doesn't seem to be active. The Expedition Birdwatcher will sell you feathers for Animos Crystals if you're really in a pinch. 
For everyone that wants to learn more about all the cool stuff you can collect from Animos outside of your Elec weapon, we'll have another video discussing the lockboxes, drops from fate, and the armor you can get with your extra crystals. One final thing to note before you like, subscribe, and move on to the next video. I would not recommend coming back to Animos to do your challenge logs each week. It's going to be more productive to do your challenge logs at your appropriate level as opposed to coming back here because you'll get significantly higher experience points from the mobs that you're killing in addition to the bonus experience you're getting from the challenge log. So that should be just about everything you need to know to get through Animos. I hope this guide was super helpful for you. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. I look forward to seeing you out there in Eureka Animos, and in our next chapter, Eureka Pagos.